Hi friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Train. Today we are going to deal with Food Safety Risk Assessment International Scientific Panels. That is a scientific international scientific panels dealing with the food safety risk assessment. Let's see. What is risk assessment? As per the definition definition of CODIS Elementary Risk Commission, that is the CSE, we have discussed about this CODIS Elementary Risk Commission in our previous video dealing with the CODIS. Here, the CAC defines risk assessment as a scientifically based process. And it consists of mainly four steps, including the hazard identification, hazard characterization, exposure assessment, and risk characterization. And also, the risk assessment provide information for identifying and characterizing the food hazards. And the risk assessment information is useful in determining which hazards are of such a nature that their prevention, elimination or reduction to acceptable level is necessary. And this information can also be useful in determining the most effective intervention strategies. The risk assessment the CAC has defined risk assessment. It is a scientific procedure which consists of four steps including hazard identification, hazard characterization, exposure assessment and risk characterization. And with the risk assessment, we will get information for identifying and characterizing the food hazards and in uh, which way they can be eliminated or prevented or which hazard has to be prevented or eliminate, eliminated. Both the Food and Agriculture Organization and the World Health Organization promote the application of risk assessment in all matters involving food safety. They are giving so much importance in the application of risk assessment in every aspect of food safety. And this assessment must be based on sound scientific advice and evidence provided by panels of competent and independent experts. The risk assessment is one of the components of risk analysis. In simple terms, risk assessment is the process of identifying a hazard and estimating the risk presented by that hazard. Next one is scientific principles for standard setting. The main principles of developing scientific advices are excellence, independence, transparency, and universality. Excellence. First one is excellence. The use of internationally recognized expertise supported by the creation of the platform for global scientific discussions based on best practices in elaborating guidance. That is, for developing a scientific principle, um, they, are, they are seeking the help of a competent, uh, independent, a scientific expert. Next one is independence. Experts contribute in their own capacity and not on behalf of a government or institution. They are required to declare possible conflicts of interest. That is, the experts should stand independent. Independent. Next one is transparency. The procedures and methods to ensure all interested parties understand the process for the development of scientific advice and have access to the report, safety assessments and evaluation and, and other basic information. All the procedures and methods should be transparent in nature. And next one is universality. A broad base of scientific data is critical for the elaboration of international standard setting activities. Therefore, the institutions and all interested parties throughout the world are invited to make data available. These are the principles for uh, developing a uh, scientific advice. Excellence, independence, transparency and universality. There are scientific panels that provide advice to codex, government and industry and let us see in detail one, one by one. First one is Joint FAO and WHO Expert Committee on Food Additives that is JECFA. 
the joint FAO and WHO expert committee on food additives. This is an international expert scientific committee that is administrated jointly by the FAO and WHO. And this was established in 1955 and its first meeting was on 1956. Uh, this committee, that is the Joint FAO WHO Expert Committee on Food Additives, was established to evaluate the safety on food additives. And the works now include the evaluation of contaminants, naturally occurring toxicants, and residues of veterinary drugs in food. The JECFA, that is the Joint FAO and WHO Expert Committee on Food Additives, was established in 1955. It was um, administrated both by the FAO and WHO. It is formed to or established to consider chemical, toxicological, and other aspects of contaminants and residues of veterinary drugs in foods for human consumption. The JECFA has evaluated more than 1,300 uh, food additives, approximately 25 contaminants and naturally occurring toxicants and residues of approximately 80 veterinary drugs till now. The committee has also developed principles for the safety assessment of chemicals in foods that are consistent with current thinking on risk assessment and take account of recent developments in toxicology and other relevant uh, sciences. Next one is the JMPR, that is the Joint FAO WHO Meetings on Pesticide Residues. The JMPR is comprised of the joint meeting of FAO panels of expertise on uh, pesticide residues in food and in the environment and the WHO core assessment group that is the JMPR consists of the joint meeting of the FAO panels of expertise on pesticide residues in food and in the environment and the WHO core assessment group. This JMPR carries out toxicological evaluation of pesticide residues normally resulting in an estimate of the ADI. In addition, the JMPR processed maximum residue limits uh, that is MRLs for uh, individual pesticides in or on specific commodities and these maximum residue, residues limits are primarily based on the uh, residue level estimated in supervised field trials when the pesticide is used according to good agricultural practices. In case where initial estimates indicates that the ADA may be exceeded, more refined intake calculations are performed using national food consumption data and information from pesticide residual monitoring programs. The JMPR, which was established in 1963 to recommend maximum residue limits for pesticide and environmental contaminants in specific food products to ensure the safety of foods containing residues. And it was also decided that this JMPR should recommend methods for sampling and analysis. Next one is JEMRA, that is the Joint FAO or WHO Expert Meetings on Microbiological Risk Assessment. Uh, from the request of the CODIS Elementarius Commission, FAO and WHO have initiated a series of joint expert in consultations to access risk associated with microbiological contamination of foods. This followed the adoption, adoption by the SAC of the principles and guidelines for the conduct of microbiological risk assessment. The aim of the joint expert consultations 
is to provide a transparent review of scientific data on the state of the art of the microbiological risk assessment and to develop the means of achieving sound quantitative risk assessment of the specific pathogen commodity combinations. The JEMRA. Uh, since 1999, there was no international scientific panel for MRAs, that is the Microbiological Risk Assessment. This the JEMRA was established in 2000 to develop and provide advice to the uh, CODIS Elementarius Commission, the FAO and the WHO on microbiological aspects of food safety. In this session, we have discussed about the risk assessment, steps involved in risk assessment, and about the scientific panels. Um, so, uh, this is all about the international panels on risk assessment dealing with food safety. And thank you for listening this video. If you like this video, give a thumbs up. Please subscribe our channel and share this video with your friends and leave your valuable comments.